when you hear it. <laughs> Welcome to the third session of Startup Showcase at Wolf Summit Vienna. And I'd like to introduce our mentors who are right here with us. And first up, we have Luisa Novatska, Investment Associate, CVC at Rebel VC. Uh, we have Peter Sandberg, Managing Partner uh, and Founder of no Nordic uh, Secondary Fund. Uh, and Thomas Schick, Regional Sales Manager at EBV Electronic. Okay, I hope that our startups are around. So, uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite Cosmin Kosma to join us here. Yes, big round of applause. Good. Hello, hi everybody. Thank you for coming here and uh, not everybody going to get the beer from the previous startup. Uh, and thank you for the jury that you have uh, uh, sunglasses. I, I took my hat also because of the sun. Uh, we are thinkware. We are. Uh, I gave to the to the jury, and everybody can have later on the guide of uh, the the revolution that we started to lead this summer. Uh, at thinkware, we are doing uh, open banking. Uh, we started four years ago to do open banking, and uh, we understood that there is a big shift in the in the fintech space. Uh, and later, we even go further with it and understood that there is a certain space in which the revolution is quiet, but is value creation at a big scale. It is the uh, open banking and the opportunities to automate uh, financial operations for corporates. Yeah, the corporates usually they have a lot of banks that they are working with. Uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, things to do with their financial data. They have a lot of payments to do. So uh, if you create the opportunity for them to uh, automate their financial operations, then it will be a very cool. And they are already searching for it. The data says that they are searching for this product. Yeah. If you look at the technologies that the, uh, that the banks are having, uh, uh, providing to them, yeah, it, it all started in the, in the accounting with uh, Blaise Pascal, a philosopher that invented the Eddig machine in uh, 1642. Yeah. This is the first technology. And everything stopped somewhere in the 85 for the companies. So uh, they have right now uh, the treasury systems that are only on premise. They use Swift messaging, which is from 77. Yeah, I, I was born later than uh, the Swift messaging that they are using yet companies to get their, uh, their statements from the banks. And uh, a lot of Excel files. Right now, with open banking, with, SaaS techno with, with, with cloud technologies, with SaaS offerings, you can create something marvelous uh, for the financial management of the, of the companies. Uh, it, this is what we, tra traditional treasury operations are very complicated, and we, there is a, a potential to do a product to be kind of the operating system of financial management for corporates, and this is our revolution that we want to to lead. Uh, we are a category setter for enterprise class of open banking provider. We provide to our customers the opportunity to aggregate cross countries, cross entities, uh, and uh, cross banks, of course, all the financial data in a single platform, which is called Think Treasury. And from this thing, single platform to automate most of their operations within the, within the company. Uh, we, there is a big market for it. We are uh, going for the companies which are uh, bigger than, uh, than 25 million euro uh, yearly revenues, up to half a billion. Yeah? The mid-market enterprises. Uh, our direct competition are two spin-offs. One is the JP Morgan uh, Trovata spin-off, which is based in the US, and they uh, try to come on our market in, in Europe, uh, and Cobase, which is a spin-off of ING Group. Uh, we already started this journey of developing our product before launching it. We just launched it this summer, so we have paying customers starting September, companies that already are using our product. Uh, in real life, I just received an SMS with uh, the first invoice paid by a big uh, healthcare company in Romania. Uh, we are already, uh, we have a pan-European 
uh, payment institution license, it took us two years to get it. Uh, so it's not easy to get the regulatory uh, on your side. It is already passported. We can operate in the whole Europe. Uh, we have a seal of excellence from European Commission. We are invested by two institutional investors, including the corporate venture capital of Raiffeisen Bank International Group, which is here at the fourth floor. Uh, yeah, we, we, are, we are accelerated by Innovix, by BCD. This is the team. Uh, we are the inglorious bastards of open banking in Central and Eastern Europe. You'll hear about us more. We are starting right now a fundraising campaign of three million. So if you are with the, with the wallets on you, we can speak uh, about this later. And in order to help you understand a little bit more our product, I still have two minutes. This is Anna from Finance. But I want some sound She's if possible. From most of the time. This is a real relief for her. She's let me, let me go back. You started from the beginning. Okay. This is Anna from finance. She's working from home most of the time. This is a real relief for her. She used to be the quickest Excel expert. She was really good at it despite all the panic. Even if once she made a terrible mistake and they took some decisions which cost them thousands of euro. But now, with Fink Treasury, no panic. Data from banks come real time and so do conversion rates. All in the right place. No questions, no excels, no mistakes. That's the true relief. If you want to feel like Anna and have a cash management tool that shows your liquidity in different currencies, has intelligent alerts and controls about limits and manages your cash positions and currency risks, use Finkware. Finkware.com. Try it for free. So to close up, uh, if you have 3 million euro to invest, and you don't want to miss the next unicorn from Central and Eastern Europe going global, let's speak. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the uh, mentoring session. Uh, we have three minutes, so um, uh, who'd like to start? Peter, would you like to start? Mm -hmm. Does it work now? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. It's nice to meet somebody with self-confidence um, and a great video also. Um, could you please elaborate a bit? Because from by my perspective, I see many uh, operators in this new bank issue. And I also understand that you've had your first kind of round around 2019. So you spent a couple of years of doing the product and getting your license. but. I mean, what took you so long uh, not to be rude on the product side? And uh, uh, what are your uh, expectations about uh, prof profitability? And uh, how far will you go with these three million? Yes, I will tell you. We started four years ago, this thing. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, open banking started to be uh, active from September 2019. And because the banks didn't want to comply from the beginning, they were, you know, you, there is a song from Green Day, a punk uh, team, uh, wake me up when September ends. This was what the, what the banks were doing. So they are just waiting for the, uh, for the things to, to come. So they postponed as much as they could the availability of API data. Uh, in the meantime, we started to work with them to make them consume the data so that we can create our aggregation infrastructure, our deep tech. Yeah? So if you like, you heard about Plaid, through layer, think, we already have that technology inside the product. Yeah? It took us two years to get the, the license and a lot of pain. It was a traumatic process, if you ask me. Uh, and if we are speaking about some other operators, yeah, there are some other companies that are targeting to have this selling proposition. We can tell you that we are one of the very few operators already doing it for corporates. So it, took, it, it takes more, much time because it's fintech, it's regulated, it's deep tech involved, and this is not doing, you know, like when you open an espresso bar. 
All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, Louisa. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Okay. Okay. So again, thanks for your presentation. Uh, I do like the movie, the short movie, because it was easy to understand what you are doing. Uh, it's a complicated pro process, but it was much easier to understand. But uh, during the presentation, I haven't got information about your uh, business model. So could you tell us a little more about yes. business model and pricing? It's a SaaS. It is, it, it, you don't have to do anything as a corporate, yeah? let's say Eden Red, yeah? one of the customers is Eden Red, a uh, 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 French uh, stock exchange listed company, or Nepiro Castle, which is Dutch lock, uh, the, uh, listed company. You don't, you don't need to involve any internal, uh, because it's a SaaS. Yeah? As a SaaS, it has a very simple pricing. You pay somewhere around 2,000, two, 2,500, uh, 2, 3,000, depending on the complexity of your banking connectivity. 4,000, it depends on the, but it's like a, around 2,000, 3,000 uh, euro per month uh, for having this product uh, at the stage that it is launched like right now. By the time we are launch, launching more and more, uh, uh, more and more modules of the product, uh, we will add on because it's kind of a, an operating system in which you put new modules on top. Yeah, for example, for audit. Yeah, uh, right now when PwC or KPMG comes to a corporate to do the annual audit, uh, they need to uh, take a PDF statements to to get the data. Because it, this data is a third party, as a payment institution, we can guarantee no corruption of the data. We can create an account, and this is a value add, both for the auditor and for the company. This is just a, an example, yeah, and so on. So, yeah, this is the, the model. Yeah, it's monthly fee with uh, value added on top. Okay. Thank you. So, so sorry, can you have very quick, uh, okay, but just like very shortly, <laughs> what is the biggest risk commercially for you uh, as a company? What is the biggest risk? Uh, the biggest risk is indeed the banks not to comply with the regulation of PSD2. Yeah, But this risk is very much uh, decreased because we are a payment institution and we are an equal player to, to make the banks comply. Okay, thanks a lot. Let's give a round of applause. Um, uh, and now I'd like to uh, I'd like to invite on stage Yulia. Yeah, you're here. Okay. All right. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, I'm Julia, I'm the CEO of Quick Legal, an online marketplace for legal services developed by three female founders with joint experience of more than 20 years in the legal field. Well, we noticed that nine out of 10 SMEs usually have at least one legal issue per month, but six out of 10 usually go to the accountant or to Google because they think a lawyer would be too expensive or time consuming. Well, guess what? Lawyers have the same issue, problems, uh, an issue reaching out to clients. Why? Because they have limited time for networking and limited venues for doing so. And at the same time, in certain countries, there are also legal restrictions for marketing their legal services. We are not in the US, we are in Europe. So how do we solve this issue? Well, right now we have legal forums, blogs, and where anyone can ask a question and someone will eventually answer, which may or may not be the, the right specialist on the issue. Or of course, you can always call that friend that can make you a recommendation, right? Of a lawyer who, again, may, may or may not be knowledgeable on your particular issue. So we believe that now is the perfect timing for quick legal. Why? Because on one hand, it solves the issue that most clients complain about, which is inaccessible and costly legal services. And we've done a survey of more than 600 individuals and 200 SMEs, and they all complain in a proportion of 90% about this issue. And on the other hand, the issue of lawyers, which obviously have a difficulty in reaching out to clients. And they said in a proportion of more than 97%. So how it works? Simple. You ask a question, you get matched with the three most suitable lawyers, 
You pick one, you schedule a meeting, and you have a free 15 minute chat with a lawyer of choice to make sure that he is the right choice for you. Um, why now, right? That's a question on everyone's mind. Well, first of all, just a couple of years ago, the EU um, and certain countries regulated this at um, this kind of platforms um, and make them like recognize and authorize on the market. This is again, we're in Europe. And of course, um, there are trends uh, that say that in, by 2025, more than 50% of the legal task will be automated. And by 2024, 25% um, of those investments will probably be outsourced to tech companies. So legal innovation is no longer a trend nor a hype. It's actually a real need. Um, Obviously, clients and enterprises will no longer accept the same type of legal services that they did 10 years ago. And it's not necessarily a question of billable hours, but it's a question of efficiency. Saving time and resources is key to our highly technological world. What makes us unique is that we're providing an end-to-end -end solution digitalizing the legal services market by incorporating an in-house developed matchmaking algorithm that instantly connects you with the right lawyer for you based on the information you provide, the legal issue that you have, the lawyer's profile, availability, time of experience, and of course the fees. We also have a um, free 15 minute chat incorporated in our platform so you can interact with that lawyer and make sure that he's the right choice for you. We are now also launching two new features on the market, one for the SMEs and individuals, and the other one for lawyers. For the SMEs and individuals, we aim to incorporate an AI robot attorney that will, be based, that will be possible to answer the most frequently asked questions based on the information and the conversations we already gather on our platform. At the same time for lawyers, we want to incorporate an RPA-powered um, <clears throat> virtual office so that we can automate certain repetitive and mundane tasks that lawyers have so they can save time. By saving time to the lawyers, the lawyer can provide more affordable legal services. So we believe that, was, we know that the market is young and still emerging because it was only recently regulated also at the EU level. So all countries have to follow up that regulation. So we are offering right now a full and complete solutions that we haven't seen yet to emerge on the market. So the timing is right and the timing is now. Talking about the market, who are our customers? Well, the customers we are addressing are both individual and SMEs as well as lawyers. And right now our target is Romania as a beachhead market, uh, which is a 3 million um, euro uh, obtainable market. But our focus in the next three years is to also expand to the CE region and to France as one of our founders is a lawyer, is in, is a lawyer in Paris. So how do we attract this market? Well, first, we want to reach out to SMEs and individuals by partnering up with key strategic partners, such as banks, or also um, companies that offer complementary services. We're also trying to uh, 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 attract the customers via, obviously, direct sales and online marketing. How do we retain these clients is by always offering them personalized legal services and at the same time, the specialized legal assistance that they need to. How do we attract on the other side of the market, the lawyers, by, of course, uh, partnering up with key legal players on the market, and at the same time using our already uh, um, extended legal network, because all three female founders are lawyers in the profession. How do we make money? Well, we have two type of revenue models, a subscription and a fixed type uh, package. Uh, we offer subscription for both lawyers and users, and the package deals we offer for the SMEs and the individuals. Right now, we are promoting this, um, this particular offer because we want to increase our visibility on the market, attract customer, and also gain their trust. Later on, we're going to promote the rest of the, um, of the business models that we have, but right now, this is the one that we are encouraging. We are our traction already. We've launched our business just this year. So we are fresh on the market because regulations wouldn't allow us until now. So we are here and we are now and we already have 200 users registered on our platform with minimum budget invested. 
We also aim to um, later expand to three other regions, to so France, Penn, and the CE region, because we already have connections there. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the amazing team that we have behind. We are three female lawyers with joint experience of more than 20 years in the legal field. We also have an IT specialist, two business advisors that are successful CEOs of successful businesses, and also a, a marketing consultant. All of them have international experience and are very well versed in the legal field. With the right investment, we believe that we can make this happen. And our target is to reach at least 2,000 paying customers in the first year. We want to also be able to successfully launch the robo attorney and the virtual office, and of course, invest in marketing and selling strategy. So we are now launching you on invitation. All of you present here, we want to offer, if you register on our platform, and you send us the code that you see on the screen, you will receive 40% discount on the packages and the services that we're offering. So please don't hesitate, L look for us, send us an email, and we're looking forward to collaborate. Thank you all for your attention, and I'm open for questions. Perfect, thank you, Yulia. Yeah, big round of applause. <laughs> all right, do we have any questions? Would you like to start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first of all, thanks for your presentation. Uh, and the question I have in mind is, how do you screen your lawyers? <laughs> yeah, so we are all lawyers. We very know, know the market in Romania and also in France. But how we screen it for now is that we are asking a lot of information from them. And because we have no comparison, right? We don't know them. All we did know, it's a list of names that the bars offer us. No one has that information. How good is that lawyer? Because. I mean, everyone's advertising they're the best in the field, but really, do you know that? So we are gathering the information, and then based on that information, we pr present that to the clients, and the clients afterwards have the option to rate them based on certain criteria. And you use that rating, right, like Uber. So once you ma get matched with a lawyer that you know, has a lower rating, you start asking why, and you see the reviews. This has never been seen before in the legal market. This is something new. And at the same time, if the lawyer keeps getting the low rating, we start asking ourselves questions, like what's going on? So based on that, we'll be able to filter the lawyers, promote the very best, and encourage them to grow, which right now, it's nowhere to be seen on the market. Thank you. Okay, yeah, Louisa? Uh, I think the most challenging thing, and thank you for the presentation, of course, it was great. And I think the most challenging thing uh, in this business will be to uh, you know, convince your clients to pay in a SaaS model. As long as I know, um, legal, legal service is more like by case, so I need uh, something to be done, right? So what's your idea how to sell it? Yeah, that's a great question. So because of that, we offer two, we have a two-sided business model. We have a subscription base for those clients, like let's say companies that have regular legal issues or they need legal drafts or they need to interact with the authorities. And they will be obviously encouraged to pay a subscription because they have a pool of lawyers on demand at their fingertips. But at the same time, we have for individuals, right, you and me, that just have one curiosity or a legal question that we offer a freemium uh, account for 10 questions a year. And if you have more issues, we can offer packages. And the packages are comprising and uh, are personalized based on the particular need of the enterprise or the individual. Yes, I will hurry up. It was a very good presentation. I have the advantage of having one of my very first angel investors personal was in a Danish legal company. It was very good, paying for a number of not very successful ones, so I love legal sake by nature. Uh, two, uh, I had two comments and a question. One, uh, banks are very difficult because they also have the big law firm as clients. They will not give you anything unless you can uh, let them in on a deal or whatever and affiliate. Secondly, I will say, I think you should also consider insurance because if people buy advice you are facilitating, uh, I would think insurance in it. And, my, and now I come to my question is actually, uh, will be for 250 euros, maybe in Romania they get a lot of, lot, but I would be suspicious if I should pay as little as that in, 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 in the re Nordic region, for instance. I mean, how much do I get as an SME? Is it one hour, is it two hours? Uh, uh, I think you, it is very important to understand also for people, uh, and for SMEs or startups, what can they expect if they are to pay 250 a month? Thank you. Right, thank you. And a great presentation, sorry. Thank you. 
Uh, so first addressing the market, yeah, I think insurance is a great one and we are working on partnering up with them. As for the banks, we're not offering services to the banks, but we're partnering with banks to offer services to their clients. They already do. We're already discussing with them as part it's of their portfolio. <laughs> it's not that design from the, from the bank, so yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, oh. Yulia. Unfortunately, <laughs> we you. ran out of time, but once again, Yulia Kaiser, quick legal. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. And now, next up, we have a Prime Dash uh, startup. <laughs> and the whole crowd again. Uh, clicker. Hello. Okay, as soon as we see our presentation, you can start. <sighs> According to Visa, the latest research to Visa, the estimated value purchase of the SMEs in Europe is 15.4 trillion euro. That means that in a way or another that money is flowing from the SMEs through different financial institutions. Another very interesting report is from EY telling us that 82% of the SMEs are willing to share their data with their primary financial bank. 62 of them are constantly looking to access capital as fast as possible. And the surprise comes here. 40% of the SMEs will immediately change their bank as soon as they have a better financial product and offer. Uh, hi, my name is Catalin Rus, co-founder of PrimeDash. PrimeDash provides contextual, connected and continuous real-time financial data. Well, why all this is important? Because every time a company goes to the bank to ask for a loan, the bank has to put that company through the first filter, which is called the financial risk assessment. That filter takes around 90 minutes for the bank to analyze the data that they requested from the company to provide. Well, with Prime Dash technology, we can do it in 60 seconds. Let's take an example. An average bank employee is taking around three hours to do a complete loan application analysis, meaning he can deliver around two per day and an average of 45 per month. Well, if we take a mid-sized bank that they have to analyze 6,000 loan applications per year, because they are not using Prime Dash technology, they are spending over a thousand days more every year. Well, it's easy to do the math to see the cost benefit of our technology. Well, how this works. First, we developed a tool, a virtual CFO called the Decision Maker, that connects to the counting data like QuickBooks, Cero, Sage. There are over 60 million SMEs worldwide using only the eight most popular cloud accounting softwares. We target companies between 1 million and 40 million euro turnover. Now the Prime Dash magic starts to happen. We take all that data and we generate valuable KPIs and ratios that any bank need in order to do a high-performance loan analysis. Then the, radar, the data is ready to connect with the bank and get pre-qualified. But there is more. Now the financial institution can use this technology to increase sale, accelerate lending, build strong engagement and loyalty with their SMEs, be more attuned to their SMEs' custom needs by offering the right product at the right moment. Well, our business model relies on three revenue streams. We have a subscription for the SMEs. We sell APIs to the banks in order to build their own incentive products. Or we take a piece of the interest rate if they use the full stack technology that we provide. In order to achieve our world domination plan, we had to partner and we, and we partner with Microsoft and Visa. We are part of the Visa Innovation Program, a program designed to help fintechs reach the visa customers and we just marked the fastest pilot program in the uh, fastest pilot pro uh, from the entire program so far by signing a contract with a bank in less than two months when an average signing is between 12 and 18 months with the financial institution we have customers in europe and us and uh, uh, since we participate in the accelerator program for, from Innovix and all, also from uh, uh, Visa Innovation, we have five commercial agreements with financial institutions and ten new in pipelines with strong negotiation. Let's talk about some numbers. Uh, up to date, we have 2,500 uh, subscriptions from the SMEs. Based on our commercial agreements, we will, uh, next year we'll close up to 40,000 uh, subscriptions, and we will reach about 100,000 in the next two years. If we talk about revenue, we estimate, we generate so far uh, 700,000 uh, uh, euro. Based on 
commercial agreements that we already signed, we will close next year with 2 million euro in revenue and also almost 9 million in the next two years. Well, we are raising 2.5 million euro to have a runway for two years. That will be mostly dedicated to move the office from Romania to UK and then to put half of the budget in marketing. Uh, our journey is to reach a Series A in the next three years and we go fully and prepare for the US market where there is the low hanging fruit for any fintech company. We are three co-founders. Uh, we have over 50 years experience, 15 years experience in finance, technology, and business development. So, if you share the same vision with our global players that we partner, now is the moment to join us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Go ahead, Peter. Thank you very much. 15 years together is impressive. I only have 35, but that, that's why I'm so old and gray-haired, sorry. <laughs> but uh, it was a very good presentation. I really like the enthusiasm, and I like very much that you are uh, executing, because execution beats everything. Big applause for that. Uh, the thing is that as an investor, whether you are a, a business angel or a VC, you, are, you, you are basically are investing in the team. My recommendation would be to start by telling why am I doing it, what is my background, and why did I do this with these awesome co-founders. You only leave me like four seconds and then the slide in the end. That's not good because people are basically buying you and your co-founders to, sorry my language, fucking execute. And you did so well on everything. If you do that, you have nearly the perfect pitch. Thank you very much. Okay, would you, would you like to say something more maybe? Uh. Yeah. Yes, um, we are two Romanian, uh, the co-founders, we are three Romanian and one U.S. Uh, citizen. My partner, Madhu from U.S., is a financial consultant. He worked uh, almost 15 years in uh, business consultants and uh, emergency consulting in uh, Chicago in a big uh, investment company. And my, uh, myself, I have uh, experience in business development and uh, I had a digital agency building software as uh, an outsourcing. And the CTO is um, uh, one of my partners that we brought because he has a lot of experience building uh, financial uh, products for banks and uh, when we build products for financial institution you need to have a certain skills uh, in order to deliver sorry I didn't insist it too much on that one no worries no worries are there any other questions feedback some advice I'm just thinking that uh, some services which uh, you can provide to the bank for instance uh, cannot be served because uh, there is some regulation. For instance, I think in Poland, uh, things like scoring to the banks uh, have to be inside the organization. So I'm just thinking uh, if you can achieve uh, clients like this. Uh, as well, I'm interested uh, about your business case with uh, banks. I saw Bank of Transylvania, so how it works. Uh, the, the, okay, um, the technology for uh, the moment we work directly with banks and with first to answer the first question to work directly with financial institution and with deliver the technology for them, uh, it's all operating on their uh, tech stack and their internal servers, so we don't have access to that data anymore. Then we have a different uh, 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 revenue model for the SMEs we bring organically, so the connection between the SMEs and the banks it's something voluntarily. So we have all the uh, from the GDPR and all the uh, approval and we are complying to all the, the regulation uh, so um, what was your que second question <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> sorry I forgot uh, I, I asked about the case with uh, with the banks ah, so. the case with the banks so we have three type of cases first we do incentive products for this for the banks and we take the entire portfolio of the com of the banks uh, like we have the US bank from uh, the transact card it's a new bank that we take the entire the 700,000 SMEs that they operate in the in the US and we uh, deliver the tool for them with uh, other banks and also we work with visa on those cases we improve the internal process on the risk assessment because uh, no matter it's in Romania or in UK, the financial risk assessment process is quite manual in all the banks. So with this, we automate and uh, we, we accelerate this process for them. And also with uh, other banks, we help them by delivering the stack and go uh, for a one-stop shop from on the lending product, from origination up to uh, up to disbursement. This is a case that we built with the investment bank from US, uh, uh, JC Flower Company. They bought our score. They bought. They took our scoring engine and put it in the in their in their financial product that they're offering to banks so these are the three cases like all right thanks a lot we ran out of time but big round of applause here Thank you. because <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 
All right, and it's time for in Investory IO. Yes, all right, you're here, perfect. Here's your, your tools. <laughs> and as soon as you see your slides, you can begin, okay? So hi, everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Guillermo, I'm the CEO of Investory, the European Startup Investor Relations Platform. I came quite late in my career to the startups world. I spent a lot of time working for corporates, selling transformation, digital transformation, data-driven strategies to large banks and financial institutions. But I was always attracted by the startup world. And it, it was quite difficult to get out of corporate because they pay you very well, you learn a lot, they don't let you go very easily. So I started doing mentoring for startups as part of uh, acceleration programs and I even invested some of my own money. And I learned like that in my own flesh how difficult it is and how difficult it is to find the right companies. And putting these dots in my experience together, I figured that one of the few sectors in finance that are still not using data in a significant way is startup investment. VCs, angels, accelerators, fundings, uh, founders looking for funding, all of us here. So what's going on? The industry has been speaking about data-driven VC for years. Some of these articles you may have read, some of them are five, six, seven years old. There are some funds on both sides of the Atlantic doing things, scraping data, creating models, but it hasn't really changed in a significant way. So I kept doing my research, went to Silicon Valley, talked to a lot of people, did some training in Stanford, and came to the conclusion that actually what's missing is data. And that can sound obvious, but it's not so much because there is much more data about startups right now in the market than there used to be a few years ago. You have the likes of Crunchbook, Crunchbase, Pitchbook, Traction, uh, funds scraping the web for signals. And this is data that is very, it's about a lot of companies. You have hundreds of thousands of companies there, but it can be shallow. You're lucky if you find revenues, you will never find operational metrics uh, or anything deeper than that. You, and it's also, quite outdated quite quickly because they update it when there is a round and then it's there like that for another two years. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have the VCs. VCs have their own platforms, their own data, very deep, very current, but a normal fund would have 30 companies. Big fund may have two, 300 companies, and no one has data that is current, relevant, and about thousands of companies. And that's how I started and I met Investory. Investory was being incubated here in Austria. And uh, I joined them as a late founder and CEO, and I think it has the key to delivering this data-driven VC promise. Investory is a SaaS platform for investor relations for startups and portfolio monitoring for funds. So startups put their data there, they take away the pain from investor relations, and then funds take the data from there, and they also solve the pain of a process that is even more painful and more difficult, that is portfolio monitoring and reporting to their own LPs. And it's getting more and more difficult right now, even with more regulation, ESG reporting, and all the things that are going on. Investory has already reached that critical mass that allows to produce value from this data. We have around 13,000 users in the platform, belonging to some 3,000 startups, 1,000 institutional investors, few thousand angels, and growing steadily, mostly around Europe to get a relevant critical mass. And we have done this growth with an organic viral model. Companies invite their investors, investors, start, investors invite their companies in their, in their portfolio, and on average, each user is bringing about 0 0.75, 0 0.8 users, which is uh, quite close to one, that is the viral number that gets you to grow exponentially. So where do we want to go from here? We have learned what makes companies and investors engage, what makes them invite other companies. So we want to invest in our product to take that viral component slightly above one and take us to uh, an exponential growth phase that can get us very quickly to penetrate a large portion of the European market and then the global market. And 
in parallel, more importantly, we want to move beyond the pure SaaS model, a subscription based where we operate now and start extracting data or extracting value from the data itself. First feature that we are going to release in the next few weeks, even before we raise the next round, is benchmarking. That's the first time that startups and their investors will be able to compare performance of their companies against their peers using the actual data that they use to report to their VCs. That's the first time. And from there, with the data, uh, there are so many things that can be done from models, uh, deal flow models, lending model, validation of data, sentiment analytics, you name it. This is a large market. The SaaS model, the SaaS market for VCs, according to our estimate, is 200 million market. Uh, some estimates are even much bigger than that. But that's not the biggest price. The biggest price is if by adding this transparency to the startup investment market, the market grows a lot, a lot of money comes in, then getting a portion of that extra money is where the real value of a data platform for startups is. So we are raising a seed round now. We want to raise between one and one and a half million euros, and this would go to two things. One is into the existing SaaS subscription-based business that is with, has product market fit, has initial revenues, and is ready to scale. And the rest of it goes into discovering and testing these data monetization options to start getting the data and the value out of the data. We're a small team. I'm the CEO. I have some combination of people that have years uh, doing this and people that are younger and very energetic. And we are backed by well-known names in the industry, including accelerators, VCs, and some well-known angel investors and the incubators of Investory. And just to end, to summarize, I think as an investor, you get the best of world, both worlds here. You have a proven platform with product market fit that is ready to grow. And then at the same time, you have the opportunity to disrupt startup investment using data, finally. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, big round of applause. Let's move on straight to the Q&A. Uh, would you like to start, Peter? Uh, no. <laughs> I would like, but I have a disclaimer. I'm actually uh, an investor in the company by Startup Vice ah. Guy, so I will leave. I will give a few comments when the other ones have said. It's okay. But it's I, a mentoring I'm, session. I'm a bit it's biased. not a competition, I'm a you know? Bit, I'm a little bit positive. I can see All right. between you and I. All right. So, Lu so Luisa, go ahead. I think I have a question. So what would happen if uh, the companies like uh, Crunchbase or Pitchbook uh, will decide to provide the service as you do? You know, well, they have a huge uh, mm. well, popularity. It, yeah, it, it's very different data because they are based on public data. They can sell data. We cannot sell data because this is data that is very sensitive, uh, very uh, private and confidential to the companies. It's all permissioned, and we take that very seriously. So Crunchbase, they're in the business of a completely different business, selling, private, selling public data for people that are trying to sell to startups or to get investment. Uh, having private permission data is something that they don't have, and then potentially there could be an exit route for us to, to exit to Crunchbase or Pitchbook, but it's not something that they, I see them doing it uh, in any time in the short term. What's the benefit for the investor to use an additional software where he has to enter his data? Yeah, so there is a, the short-term process benefit, that is the effort saving by having all this consolidation of data coming from all the portfolio companies and then creating their LP reports and their regulatory reports and so on. So that's the typical uh, savings, effort savings and process savings that any platform, software platform for companies have. But then on top of that, there is the effectiveness saving. The platform that they use right now, they use it for deal flow very early stage in the funnel. So they can get a long list of companies. They can say, okay, I want to see all the companies that are in this market, more or less this investment, but it, it gets there just to that point. If they want to go any deeper than that and evaluate a little bit deeper before they start talking to the companies or identify companies, then that data, that information is not there. It's not in those platforms. It's only in their own databases for their own uh, companies and in their big database of pitches, but they are all outdated the next day after they get them. So really the only place is a private data platform that has data from companies of all the VCs in the community. 
I mean, you know, if, you, if I can add, as an angel investor with more than 40 direct investment, it's super important that you have a tool, both your accountant and your close one uh, can look. If you suddenly get hit by a car, no one knows, uh, sorry again, uh, what the fuck the, it means in the spreadsheet, investory, and there are very few other solutions which can provide you with that uh, uh, overview of your, of your deals. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. All right, we ran out of time, so thanks a lot. Thank Big you. round of applause. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite the last startup pitching in this particular session. We'll have more even today. Uh, and it's Factress and Kaspars. Here I have your tools you. and the clicker. All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here. Sun is shining, people are smiling, Be city is beautiful. And so my name is Kaspers. I'm a head of business development in company Factories. We are pan-European digital receivable management company. So what we do? We providing SMEs with a working capital based on their issued invoices and receivables. So if company is selling goods or providing services and the payment term is 15 till 90 days, we are financing that kind of invoice. Also, we are taking off, uh, care of collection of receivables. So we are helping to our customer focusing only on business and uh, we are dealing with the debtors who are delaying on the payments. And to make our customers sleep better and our investors also sleep better, all invoices which we are financing, we are insuring with insurance company. So basically we are providing risk-free financing product. What is the market problem? So. <clears throat> At the moment, uh, which we see that first of uh, all, there is huge problems that um, all market is fragmented. So historically, factoring companies are working usually locally because of lack of infrastructure, of different regulation across the countries and uh, languages requirements. So that leads that we don't have one strong leader across the Europe. Another thing is expensive cost of the capital because if you work locally, you don't have, you cannot grow uh, with higher volumes, and that gives the impact of the capital. And that the technology is underdeveloped, that uh, invoice financing companies do not have uh, finance to invest in technology. So there's a lot of manual work. So and basically. SMEs frequently do not have access to unsecured lending. So, what we receive till that moment? We have more than 1,500 customers across the Europe uh, in uh, five countries where we are operating. It's Netherlands, Latvia, Lithuania, and two new countries which we started this year, Belgium and Poland. We having the best in the class of NPL ratios, that means non-performant loan ratio, we have only 0.22%. Uh, this is because our risk management system is uh, supported with AI. We financed more than 800 million euros in uh, small and medium business invoices from 49 countries. We are financing export deals across the all OECD countries. So, besides that, we developed our in-house platform, thanks to European grant, which helps to our customers to upload invoices and to make, it, to make access to the funds much faster. Also, with ML-based algorithms, our risk assessment team can predict the probability of the loan will be defaulted or the loan will be uh, delayed. And also, the system helps us to process more than 6,000 invoices per month, which means that basically, on daily basis, we are financing 300 invoices per day and to serve 5,500 debtors. So taking account the last year's difficulties and challenges, we managed to grow our business more than 
300%. And uh, it looks like we will close this year with a much higher loan portfolio. Taking also these challenges, uh, COVID uh, war in Ukraine, we uh, managed to decrease uh, non-performing loans. So when we, like I told before, working with 0.22%. So what is our unique investment opportunity for investors? So first of all, we are the largest alternative factoring provider across the three countries in European Union. We are the fast growing company in the revenues, uh, size of portfolio, number of the customers. And of course, we have our gold, our platform, which helps to us finance faster and helps to us, to our clients, to see, see the traction, how their invoices are processed. For next year, we are planning to uh, enter in new markets. At the moment, we are choosing for two markets. And uh, our partners, in equity and debt investors, we have NN Investment, Speed Invest, Dexterity, SAB Venture, and Advanced Global Capital. And other partners, Atreadius, which insuring our invoices, ING Bank, which is taking care of our money, Deloitte, which is auditing us, and uh, PricewaterCooper, who will lead our next Series B round. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Kasparas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the, to the questions, to any feedback that you have, any advice. Who'd like to start? Peter? Mm -hmm. I'm happy. Uh, it's quite unusual seeing a startup having raised $80 million uh, or something like that, as you have so far, which is impressive. Only saying only in humble in respect, being in the Netherlands and two minor Baltic countries, which are super uh, tech strong, I was wondering what are the plans for expansion? Uh, you, you, you showed some countries. You said two. You didn't mention. Is it Germany? Is it Denmark? Or is it a, what are the expansion plans? And uh, what is uh, uh, what is the exit for the investors? Will they be an IPO? Will it be bought by? Uh, are there any thoughts on that you can share? Uh, so, <clears throat> for next uh, countries, uh, we are looking for Germany because it's a big market, uh, but only it's licensed. So we are now res making research on that. And uh, also we are, uh, because like we're having Lithuania, Latvia, so we're looking at Estonia also, because it's also a big market for factoring. And the factoring as a service is really well known in Estonia, it's like credit card. And uh, plus we also having a lead, a lot of leads from Estonia. So, uh, it's easier to us. And about exit strategy, of course, that we are building that company for to, to sell uh, someone. So we already got approach for some potential buyers, but uh, the price wasn't uh, that price which we expected. So we are at the moment uh, continue to grow and then uh, sell it on, uh, according to price, which what we are expecting. Right, thanks. Any, any other questions, Luisa? I think there is not a lot of questions because it was a great presentation, for, so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, I just saw uh, that you have investors like debt and investors and equity investors. Yeah. It is divided or they can be both? It, uh, it is divided, yeah. So it's, it's a good way, so plus, <laughs> again. Thank you. Okay, uh, any, any other questions? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have one um, less than one minute left. So maybe you can tell us a bit more about your team or who you'd like to network with. Do you have the state for one minute? Uh, so I would like to network with investors and we already have... Or maybe a, about your financial needs. Financial needs, yeah. So we are searching uh, 10 million and uh, plus 10 million in second secondaries. Uh, yeah, so we will use that money to develop for business developing, uh, for uh, opening uh, new countries, and to increase our development team uh, to make our platform much better and um, add a few new futures. And also, we are planning to launch a new product, which uh, we are planning to do it already in the first quarter of next year. So we, we have a lot of plans. and. Uh, a lot of uh, a big goals. 
Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you. We ran out of time. Thank you. Here, here. All right, that's it for this showcase, but there will be another one at uh, six, uh, sorry, at, uh, at 4.40 uh, uh, with Asian startups. So if you are interested in, the, in seeing uh, a bit more uh, from that uh, area of the world, come, come, to the, come to the session. But now I would like to give uh, the microphone back to our MC. Before I do that, I'd like to give huge thank you uh, to, to our judges that were here with us um, today. Uh, so, Luisa Novatska, uh, Peter Sandberg, and Thomas Schick. If you can stand up so that everyone can see you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I'll be back later. Uh, there will be some showcases tomorrow, but right now let's get back to the agenda. Thanks. Thanks, guys.